how to perform a harmful cyanobacteria self-risk assessment. New Hampshire has many beautiful lakes, ponds, and rivers to enjoy over the summer. Though New Hampshire has great water quality, harmful cyanobacteria blooms can periodically pop up. Cyanobacteria are microscopic organisms that are naturally found in freshwater ecosystems, but can sometimes grow out of control into what we call blooms. When they bloom, the level of cyanotoxin they are capable of producing can reach unsafe levels, so it is important to avoid contact with them. The New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services helps monitor New Hampshire freshwater for cyanobacteria, but we cannot perfectly characterize risk everywhere in real time, so it is important for everyone to know what cyanobacteria looks like. When cyanobacteria bloom, they are easy to visually spot, so you can look at the water when you arrive at a water body and immediately determine if it is safe to swim, wade in the water, or let your pets in. So before jumping into the water, perform a self-risk assessment. This is a two-part process that involves visually evaluating the water and keeping up to date with our resources. Cyanobacteria blooms can look like general discoloration or unusual growths that can look like clouds, ribbons, clumps, or flecks of material in the water. Some people describe these small flecks of cyanobacteria throughout the water column as looking like a snow globe. Cyanobacteria blooms can range in color from yellow, all shades of green, blue-green or cyan, and bright blue. We can also see very dark, almost black blooms, and some that look white. A unique type of cyanobacteria we see in New Hampshire is called gliotrichia. These look like tiny balls in the water. With gliotrichia, the risk of recreation is low if the density looks like a starry night, like in the photo on the left, but if the density looks like a galaxy, like the photo on the right, or if you see a surface scum start to form like in either of these photos, stay out of the water and keep pets out until the accumulation passes. Benthic cyanobacteria are also unique looking. They are often dark in appearance and can form clouds of dark material that washes up along shorelines. They can also form mats on top of sediments, clumps that float in the water, or crusts that grow or wash up along shorelines. If you see any material that looks like a cyanobacteria bloom, or you're not sure, avoid swimming or wading, keep pets out, and keep them away from any questionable material that may have washed up along shorelines. You can report suspected cyanobacteria blooms to NHDES through the bloom report form, which is linked below, and we will be in touch about sampling. The primary route of exposure to cyanotoxins is through ingestion, typically from accidental ingestion from swimming, but symptoms can also occur through skin, eye, nose, or mouth contact, as well as inhalation. Exposure can lead to dermal, eye, nose, and mouth irritations, general malaise, fever, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, tingling, numbness, seizures, and in severe cases, nervous system and organ failure or death. These serious outcomes are much more common to see in animals as they are more likely to ingest greater amounts of cyanobacteria bloom material. If you come in contact with cyanobacteria, rinse off with fresh water as soon as possible and give your dogs a thorough bath. Dogs can be exposed to more cyanotoxins by licking their fur clean. There are some commonly confused lookalikes that you may come across that are not harmful to human health. Green filamentous algae is commonly confused with cyanobacteria. You can distinguish it from cyanobacteria by putting a stick in the material and pulling it above the water. If the material is stringy and fibrous or hair-like hanging off the stick, then it is very likely harmless green filamentous algae and not cyanobacteria. It is also common to see bubbles caught in the material or clouds of the green filamentous algae below the surface of the water. During pollen season, it is common to see yellow clouds of material in lakes, as well as on the ground, on your cars, and everywhere. When you see yellow clouds of material in the water during this time of year, it is very likely just pollen, but sometimes cyanobacteria can be mixed in with pollen. Best practice is to avoid swimming near this material until it passes. Duckweed can also grow to nuisance levels, but you can distinguish it from cyanobacteria by closely looking at it. These organisms have tiny leaf and root structures. Harmful cyanobacteria blooms do not have these features. Becoming familiar with what cyanobacteria blooms can look like while considering common lookalikes is an important step to safely recreating in any water. The second part of a self-risk assessment is to stay informed by following our resources. The Healthy Swimming Mapper has all current cyanobacteria warnings and watches to inform you on where unsafe levels of cyanobacteria have been documented and what bloom material looks like. Active warnings and watches are listed on the right side, and if you click on them, the map will zoom to the water body to show you more information. 
This information includes what cyanobacteria was identified, as well as the density and photos of the bloom material, as well as a history of cyanobacteria blooms at the water body. You can also sign up for emails for your favorite water body through our water body specific email list. If there is a warning for your water body, there have been unsafe levels of cyanobacteria documented in the water. NHDES advises against wading or swimming in areas experiencing a bloom. If you choose to recreate, the risk is higher in areas where you can visually see cyanobacteria presence and lower where the water looks clear. Children and pets are at a greater risk to cyanobacteria exposure and bloom conditions can change rapidly, so keep a close eye on the water if you choose to recreate. Warnings and watches are posted lakewide or for sections of some of New Hampshire's big lakes as bloom material grows throughout the water column and piles up along shorelines based on wind, wave, and boat action. These factors can also move concentrated bloom material around a water body. Though warnings and watches are posted lakewide, the whole water body may not be affected at all times. If you choose to recreate, carefully evaluating the water for cyanobacteria presence and swimming, wading, or boating only in clear water can reduce your risk. So remember to look before you leap this summer and do your self-risk assessment. This common sense approach to recreating will keep your family safe from potentially harmful cyanobacteria and happily recreating in New Hampshire's beautiful lakes, ponds, and rivers.